grinder and paint will make you the welder you ain't. So I lost the power supply. Um, I actually lost two. Lost that one a while ago. And that one just went. So, setbacks. I moved the uh, temperature sensor from underneath the bed to uh, on top to get a better reading. And yeah, there's a bit of a difference. Underneath just wasn't warming up for the longest. And then I moved it on top right here. Just taped it up there for now. Oh, look at that. It just popped off. You don't like the tape. Get back in there. I'm gonna put some more tape on that. And I was picking up the temperatures beautifully, you know. See if we can go up a bit more. So I got this thing going. Hopefully it won't feel like a sauna in here. At the expense of a little added noise in the background. This is a shot from underneath the tank. You're welcome. So I've got two layers of this one inch thick styrofoam under here for uh, a bit of R value. We'll see how well it works out. So apparently water increases in volume when it gets hot. Who knew? I hope you guys can hear me with that big old fan in the background. But uh, I'm 0 for 2 on this coating. So this stuff comes off the polypropylene bed as well. Yay, it's new extruder time! Fan, shroud, extruder, housing, all put together. Nice little neat package for me. I love neat packages. Let's get this off. Sure, let's mount this up while the fans are in there. That's a good idea. I'm gonna get my measurement here. Not sure if I like that color or not. The hot end color, I mean. I'm always clarifying myself on this channel. Okay. Give it a little tweak. A little push. That should do. Now, doesn't that just look better? You get the Big beautiful extruder now, running upside down. <laughs> it's gonna work. I'm gonna relevel my uh, BL Touch. All right, two new power supplies there and there. We are back in business. Sticks pretty well once you get the, the layer height uh, dialed in. Like I can't peel that off with my hand. The first three parts you saw on the time lapse uh, printed well, the H, the two side pieces, but one of these failed due to the layer height. So when it got over here, it just disconnected. So, good job. Flex wheel extruder and new hot end. You did great.
So getting this off, just gotta get fingers under one side of it. And it should pull up quite nicely when to do that. So we'll see here. So one of the perks of pr printing on polypropylene. So, you hear that sound? It's a lot like the, it's like uh, shipping tape, packing tape. And there we have it. Get a little of the bed off with it. And so this coating is not as tough as I would like. So uh, I'm gonna have to do something about this. Uh, one, my, I'm gonna dial in how the, the hot end um, sits to sits on the bed, so I'll get my uh, bed height dialed in. There's a lot of bumps and warps and waves in this bed, uh, which means, sadly, um, the polypropylene may be a good idea on a smaller size printer, but not so great on this hockey rink of a printer. So I'll need a uh, another bed solution. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. Put this where it belongs. You're like, why did you print a V? Well, it's not really a V. Technically, it's a triangle. And this shape right here is a pin rose triangle, otherwise known as an, a, one of those impossible shapes. So, cool. I like it. First big print on the Autocrafter. Side note, the uh, amount of heat that this bed puts off is like standing next to an oven. It's pretty intense. And that's not, um, that's at 40 C or around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I may have to rethink my solution for heating. Oh, well, we'll see. I went to a smaller size up here just because I didn't want any, just because I didn't need anything huge bouncing around up here while I was printing. But man, it's not even, it just sits there solid. It doesn't even move at all when it's moving around. So I, don't, I think I could probably get away with the big, the big filament roll. This is just the 500. Uh, gram 1.75 PLA filament. PLA, the classic printing filament. I'm running with these two um, tensioners off because I uh, um, needed to cut them shorter uh, or drill holes in my back plate. And I went to the lazy route and went and cut them. And then I made them too short. So, oops, I'm, uh, I need to replace those. Okay, what's next on the printer? Um, get this bed figured out, get it nice and level, and um, get that exhaust fan pumping full so I can make sure all this humid air gets out of here. Um, right now it's leaking like a sieve all the way around it. Uh, next, after that I need to um, come through and actually mount this thing proper. Right here, these are temporary. Um, and it, it definitely lets me know it's temporary, kind of wobbles all over the place. Need to do proper mounting to the bed down here. I got an adhesive mounted at the moment. Adhesive mounts under there. It seemed to work out so far, but yeah, that's not gonna be, that's gonna be a real problem. And um, check this out. I don't know if you can see that. So here's the bed, nice and solid. So that's what happens when you uh, put a 3D printer on four feet of st of steel pipe or four feet of steel tube. So I need some way of attaching this and this together. I think that's gonna be the best way for rigidity rather than trying to beef up these tables. They're already heavy enough. Um, so connecting here and here in a nice solid um, mechanical connection should eliminate a lot of that back and forth because um, this way and that way, it's not too bad. It's pretty good. Uh, but that, that'll also eliminate that as well. Plus I need handles. Um, this moving this bed around is pretty tough. It weighs probably somewhere around 300 pounds with all the water in it. Um, and it's on casters, but the casters go in one way and swivel back around the other way when I want, when I want to bring it back out. So move, the initial move with water in it is pretty tough. And I need some way of draining the water out down below down here. I need a storage tank for that. Um, because I can't move this thing very fast, it's full of water, it just sloshes all over the place and uh, makes a mess to clean up. Oh, well, let's check out 
my temporary um, temperature sensor. Um, hold on just a hot second. Yeah, you can tell I'm a 3D printing nerd. What are you doing? I am getting under here. That's what I'm doing. So check out the water. Um, this is after two weeks or so. Uh, way better. Um, it's got two gallons of antifreeze concentrate in there, and that seemed to really, really help with the rust presented prevention as well as my coating that I have on these bars really, really help as well. And the filter, everything starts to add up, so the water is staying um, around that color. Um, just uh, not something you want to be drinking, but it does quite a nice job. So thank you, Prestone, for the good chemical engineering and rust prevention. Also, this rat's nest needs to be cleaned up. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy over here. We'll get that buttoned up. A lot of people ask me, what am I going to use a big printer like this for? Why not just go with the normal size printer? I'm starting an industrial fabrication shop and business here in my garage. I'll be doing... Moving around here. Um, I'll be making parts and accessories for my passion, initially, which is behind me. The 2019 Harley Davidson Iron 1200. Because I'm starting a fabrication shop, and I need big tools for this. And is it oversized? Yeah, it's a little bit oversized. It's a, it was a, initially a bit of a gimmick, but it's also always been a plan of mine to build something like this. But it's not just a printer. It's a, uh, or will be, let me move you around over here, a fully swappable um, fabrication system. So the thing about the printer is just a robot that can move in any point that I want and I just make it smarter by giving it different attachments and it can do whatever I want. So it's not just a 3D printer. It's also going to be a plasma cutter and more, th more than likely a CNC router as well. I'm just going with a 3D printer is because this is the stuff I know how to do first. The rest of it I'll be learning and I don't have the budget to purchase the power source for the plasma cutter at the moment. So I'm making parts and accessories for motorcycles here in my garage, and I'm sitting on one at the moment. Uh, this is my Iron 1200 from Harley Davidson. Uh, picked her up uh, back in March, so she's quite new. Uh, my previous experiment, experience with motorcycles was dirt bikes uh, that was growing up, but this is my first uh, street legal machine. And um, this is my first bike. I plan on getting quite a few more. So uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you follow along on my journey here of creating my own fabrication business here in my garage. And I hope the crazy shenanigans, shenanigans I get into and the crazy adventures that I get to do inspire you to create your own adventures as well. Be, be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell notification, you know, the usual things YouTubers tell you to do, as well as check me out on Patreon. I'd appreciate it. Thanks guys. Links in the video description. As well as follow me on Instagram, uh, Hail Design Tech. Uh, everything's down there in the video description anyway. Just pop down there. And get out of here. I got nothing else for you right now.